afternoon, everybody. Welcome to week eight of our podcast. Get your act together with me, Jack Wynn. I hope you're all doing fine and well on this Wednesday afternoon. Um, we've got some interesting uh, things coming up in today's lesson. We're going to be looking at another rock school grade piece, and we are going to be finishing up with our scales that we've been looking at from grade one. So hopefully by the end of today, you'll have completed all of your scales. So we'll have looked at um, C major, A natural minor, E minor pentatonic, A minor pentatonic, and last but not least with today's lesson, we're gonna be looking at G major pentatonic. Okay, so ju but just before we get started, as we do with, with every session, just going to say a brief disclaimer. So if you're under 18, please tell your parents you're doing this session. Um, please feel free to ask questions and make comments, but stay safe online by only giving your first name. Yeah, so let's get started without further ado. Yeah, so I hope you're all okay this uh, fine Wednesday afternoon. So we're just going to check everybody's in tune. So I'm going to tune with an E major chord. <laughs> Go through each individual string and hopefully you've got your E major chords. Like so. And if everyone's in tune, we're going to get started. We're doing some nice uh, quick warm ups today because I thought it'd be more interesting to get straight into the lesson. I'm just going to stream, uh, copy, sorry, uh, the song that we're going to do so i'll paste that in there save that for later <clears throat> yeah so we'll do we'll get started with a quick tonal um stretching exercise um just to loosen our fingers and get us warmed into playing but we're going to do it a little slightly bit different this week so instead of starting low and going to high or ascending we're going to start way up here with our pinky on the seventh fret on the, the high E string, so on the note E, and we're gonna go descending down the neck using each finger doing a tone gap in between each one, so like so. So after four, one, two, three, four, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then we're gonna skip onto the B string, one, two, three, four, and then so on and so forth, onto the G, one, two, three, Four, and then on to the D, one, two, three, four, and then on to the A, one, two, three, four, and then on to the E, one, two, three, four. And if you notice what I was doing in between there as well, I'm doing two exercises at once, which is a pretty cool thing to do because you can practice two skill sets at once. So there, as I'm going down the notes, for example, I'm giving it a little bit of what's called vibrato, where you can hear the note wobbling out. And what you're doing there is just, it's just slightly moving the note you're playing. So it's still within that note that you're playing. So for example, this is in the note, it's on the note here, but it's create, creating a little wobble. And it's a really good thing to do and get into that sort of skill set where you're practicing two things at once. And sometimes you do it without even realizing you're doing it. But anyway, we'll carry on. So I thought now we'll do a little, because it's week eight, I thought it might be quite interesting to do a little quiz if people are on board for that. So I'm going to play some simple open chords. And what would be really nice if people could identify these chords so I know where we're at. So I'm going to start nice and easy. I'm going to start with this one here. So if people could identify that, that would be great. And hopefully you've got that one. And then we're going to move on. We're going to play. Well done, Paul. Got it. Yeah. And next one, we've got a. Any ideas? Brilliant, Paul. Smashing it. And last but not least, we'll do one more. a little bit of fun this guys mm -hmm. 
So we've got a D there. Yeah, great stuff. So we're um, going to keep on moving forward. So getting to the first part of this lesson, I just wanted to talk a little bit about different ways of you can different ways of playing the guitar. Now, one of the <clears throat> most popular ways, like the strumming, like this. So if you're going to an E major chord, now it's just a strum that nice and open. I want to talk a little bit about another style of playing called palm muting. So what I mean by that, so you're going to use your palm, including the name, and we're going to take our palm and we're going to rest it on the strings there. And we're still, our pick's going to be right in that position. And so I'm going like this. So if you notice, the strings are deadening, but they're still coming through. You're still hearing those notes. So if I let go of my palm, and then if I go to put my palm back on. And it just creates a nice sort of rhythmic, different sort of expression of way of playing. And if you let go of punch. So it's just creating, when you're doing little things with palm muting, it's just creating lots of beautiful dynamics with your playing, going from loud to quiet or you know, crescendo to diminuendo if you want to talk in musical phrases. Uh, another way I thought was a really good tip and something I learned later on in my career from playing is alternate picking. So, so when you're playing a riff, for example, say I'm going to go... I'm going all down strokes there, but if I want to alternate, so I'm going down, then up, down, up, down, up. And the way that could come in hander as a, as a as a player is when you're doing things and you want to do them really fast so say you want to go play an A really fast like this if you notice there I'm exerting quite a lot of energy and it's in a guitarist sort of manifesto to want to limit the amount of energy you're um, releasing but get the most out of what you're doing so I might decide I want to do that instead, like alternate. So I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up. So I'm going. Or if I'm doing it in one note, um, like. And you can get really fast with it once you get into up to speed. So you can start doing stuff like this, which is called a trill. So I'm going. Little things like that really come in handy. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit as well about finger style playing. So I know we've been touching upon some uh, nice uh, finger finger style playing in last week's and the week before lesson. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about using your fingers and I'll give you a little tip of something you can do if you want to start using all four fingers, which a lot of a lot of players do. So if I was to go on my E chord, we're just going to keep on E chord now just for these exercises. I'm going to put my fingers, my thumb, on that rest in that low E, and these four fingers are going to rest on the D, the G, and the B. And I'm just going to go through individually, slowly. So I'm going E, D, G, B. And if I build that faster... Build up some real nice speed with that and get some real nice sort of things. And if you want to switch up to the D. So what this is like a finger style, it's called a roll on technique. So I'm rolling on and rolling off. Like so, and that just goes with me going, getting all those fingers nice and used to playing, getting them nice and comfortable and getting them used to plucking a string because I know a lot of people when you start out with finger style guitar, the tendency you want to use these two main fingers because that feels the most comfortable and the most appropriate, but you're hindering yourself uh, for later on in your sort of guitar journey, so to speak. So always, always go to these four fingers and a great, a great way to practice it, like I said, is just to be going, get your fingers nice and comfortable on the guitar Go and get your arms. I'm not in a, the most comfortable position here because I'm trying to um, get all in a video. But if I was sat more comfortable, I'd have the guitar on my right leg in a fork way and I'd just have it close to my body resting and I'll get my arm nice and rest and nice and comfortable. 
and I'm just nice and relaxed and I'm just rolling on using all my fingers, all four fingers, going nice and slow and then you can start to build up your tempo. And you can do this with a, met a metronome or you can do it without and just practice going from, once you get that nice slow thing where you're getting all the strings going, build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up and try that out. Yeah, I just want to talk about a few different ways you can approach playing your guitar. Um, right now, without further ado, let's get on to our last scale we're going to be looking at in grade one. And now, uh, hopefully, with this all being in mind, um, we're going to move on to some grade two stuff, so a little bit more tricky stuff. Um, but I just wanted to complete this grade one thing. So this is the last scale in the uh, grade one series that you would be expected to be able to play. So... We've learned our C major scale. So if we just um, want to reiterate on that C major scale, it is third fret on the C, um, on third fret on the A string, sorry, and then open on the D, second on the D, third on the D, open on the G, um, second on the G, and then open on the B, and then first on the B. So all in all, that would sound something like this. And if you want to go back down, so that one, and then we've done, I'm not going to go through all these guys, just want to uh, kind of keep on moving forward, but then we've done our A natural minor, so we'll just go over that one more time, so it's open on the A, obviously, because A natural minor, you always start with the note, um, the lowest note is always the name of the scale, okay, so it says open on the A, two on the, on the, uh, on the A, and then three on the A, and then open on the D, and then two on the D, and then three on the D, and then open on the G and then two on the G. So like so it goes. Like that. And so we've done E minor pentatonic and A minor pentatonic. So we're going to finish it up now with scales uh, on our G uh, major pentatonic. Okay, so <laughs> if everyone's ready, I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, we're going to start with our lowest finger. So I like to start this one with my third finger because then my other fingers are more in place here. You might want to start. I feel like if you start it with this finger, you're going to hinder yourself because you're going to be having to rearrange your hand to move down to, to get to the next notes. But So I like to start, like I said, using my ring finger like so. So we're going to go G, open on the A, two on the A, open on the D, two on the G, uh, D and then open on the G and then you don't and then when you're going back down the scale you don't repeat that G you just go and that's a really fun scale and it's a scale we're going to be using in today's uh, lesson when you want to jam around with it so we're going to be looking at um, a song today um, called Ain't No Sunshine uh, by Bill w with Bill Withers the late great Bill Withers fantastic soul artist um, I'm going to play a little example of a crime to stop that song playing, but anyway, onwards and upwards. So yeah, with today's lesson, so I've got with me, I've wrote out today, because I was trying to work out a screen share and I couldn't for the life of me do it. So I've got, you can see on here, I've wrote out the tabs for this song. And if you go on the link that I've posted, it should be there in this this is the grade one rock school piece that you would be expected to play in an exam. So if I just give this a little bit of a play, and I will have a little listen to this. So it's a nice and nice and simple piece, this guys, hopefully, so it should get us um, should get us off playing. Just leave it there for now. Yeah, so this, like I said, this is a great piece. And we're going to be looking at tabs. And I'm not sure how many people um, out there who are watching right now are familiar with tabs. But I'm going to assume that people are new to tabs. So if you know tabs and you're great with tabs, then fantastic. Um, stay with me. But this is aimed at people who are, who are new to tabs. And so I've gone for this piece because it's quite a simple Simple piece to understand. So we're going to take a little look at this sheet. 
and we're going to get playing soon, guys. So I just wanted to show you, familiarize it with this. So when these six lines here represent the strings on the guitar. So this one here being your low E string to this one here being your high E string. Okay. And this represents a bar. Okay. So this little zero sign here means on our low E string, where a low A string, sorry, we're going to be playing that open. So we're not going to be fretting any strings on that one. And then we're going to jump across to our uh, low E string, which is also going to be played open. So it's not going to be fretted. And then when it goes to this one here, it says three. What that means is you count up three. And so that's going to be played on the, on the third fret of the low E string. Okay. And so I think we should be okay with that one. And then just last but not least, just before we get into the sort of playing this. So this little sign here, I'm sure you're aware, it says E minor. So that's an E minor chord. But here, it's just telling you how to play that, how to fret that, okay? Uh, and they're, they're fretting this on, on with, it, with it being a grade one. They're doing a little bit more of a simple version because if you notice when you go to G, all of it says zero, zero, zero. And we know, and it says it's only three notes, and we know that that is not how you play a full G. You know, a full B, a full G chord being like this. You're fretting on the a second, third fret of the G string, the second fret of the B string, and then the third fret of the high E string, like that. So if you're looking at that piece, it's just gonna have us fretting it like that, which is because in the chord, it does have them open, but Right now, I feel like we're at a better stage than um, that. So I feel like we should play, when it comes to these chords, we should play the E minor and we should play the G like that. And it's got the normal A minor. Okay, so without further ado, I'm just gonna go through it bit by bit. Okay, so I'm gonna put the track on now and just rewind it and then we're gonna play to it. So it's two, three, four. So it's open A, open E. G and then back to A, rest and then again, open E, okay, and then here we have the D minor to A, D minor to A minor section, so they've got it fretted like this, so it's called, we're playing an arpeggio, because we're not playing the chord as one strum, we're picking out the notes individually, which is called arpeggio because you're picking out the notes individually but in within that chord so for that one if you look where i've got written on my so we're doing a bit of faffing today putting things down picking things up so if you look on here where it says where it says um where are we oh yeah <clears throat> so on the e minor so it says two zero so two on the d Z uh, zero on the G, which means open, obviously, and then open on the B, and then open on the high E string, which would be if we're playing. So if you want to have a little go with that one, guys, if I was like this, it would be fretting. So it's two on the G, and then open on everyone else. So I'm going like that, which is just me playing a more simplistic version of the E minor, the full E minor, so I'm not plucking out these low notes, I'm just going, playing the octave, I'm going for the E minor, and then for the D minor, it's going to say, it's going to say open, so let's get this a nice better view, it's going to be, where are we here, right, so it's going to be open on the, uh, open on the, um, the D, and then second on the G, and then third on the B, and you don't play the high E one on this, so that chord would look something like this. So we're going to fret up on the second, and then it's going to be uh, open on the D, sorry, and then second on the G, and third on the B. So all in all, that would look like this. And then... So if you guys are with me on this, and we've got a little thing, what we're going to do now is we're just going to have a little go at playing the song together from start to finish. And don't worry if you guys get lost a little bit, um, but we're just going to go for it and see how we get on. So I'm going to start this track again. So it's got a four bar counting. Let me know in the comments if you're struggling with anything. We can have a look at it again. Okay, so it's going to come in now. Two, three, four and one. 
Then rest. And now we're going to move to that E minor, so remember. So it's where it gets the chords. So nice and simple. And then. Just ends like that, guys. So yeah, that should be one that I'm hoping is in our skill range. And um, yeah, if that's something, it's hard. It's hard to look at it together, obviously, with the nature of these lessons and us being apart from each other. So I'm not sure how you guys are getting along with that. If you've got anything that you're struggling with in that or you want to go over it in a little bit more detail or if you're still not grasping the concept of how we can go over something again and uh, maybe break it up a little bit more but yeah basically i just wanted to kind of look over a final piece in grade one and um, we've so because we've covered all our scales now we've covered a couple of pieces now with did we did green onions last week and this week we've done Ain't No Sunshine and they're really two great pieces and fairly simple. This one has a little bit more to think about because you've got some arpeggios to play for chords and things like that. But yeah, it should, should be something you should have some fun with and hopefully by the end of it you'll be able to play it. So moving forward, because um, I didn't want to spend too many times on rock school grades, I wanted to also have some fun and not take uh, not put all the academia. So we're going to look at another little cool song, which is very similar, uh, very similar to that song, but it's got more chords in it. We're not going to look at tabs. We're just going to do it the old fashioned way with this one, which is I'll show you how to play it and we'll do it that way. And this has got a great little simple riff in it. It's a really cool song. It's uh, probably the earliest rock and roll song um, on record that you can say. So it's called uh, Rumble and it's by an artist called Link Ray. So I'm going to play it here, a little example, and then we'll get into it. So it's just three chords, in, four chords in this one. There's a sneaky little B7. So this is on A. So I think it's got a cap on it. So I like to hit the B7. Like so, okay. So if I just pause this one. So yeah, it's a great little song. This is the earliest recorded uh, song which, which people argue say invented rock and roll. So nice little bit of trivia for you there. So this one's just going to start on an I nice, nice. We've got an E7, so it's just like our E major, but we're taking off a note and we're adding that note there, that D, okay? So it's going to start with, we've got an E7, we've got a D, sus2, so it's a very simple one with that as well, just like your normal D, you're just taking off that, so putting in that, adding in that um, high E. And we've got an A7, so very much like your A, you're just taking off your middle finger, making it a seventh, dominant seventh. And then last but not least in this song, we've got a B7, like so. So, so just if you're not familiar with that, we'll go over it again, because it's not a common chord that comes up so often. So you've got your second fret on the B, uh, second fret on the A, sorry, first fret on the D, and then second on the G and then we're going to put in this pinky as well at the top to add that top uh, F sharp like so so all in all it's going to be the D sus 2 E7 A7 and B7 so all seventh chords in this one and there's a cool little cheeky riff as well that we're going to go through so we're just going to have to, because that's in a different key for some reason, that record, we're going to have to imagine we're playing to the record. So we're going to start on simple strokes. It's going to go. So it's two strokes on the D. And then 
one stroke on the E7. And then two strokes on the D again. And this time we're going to go to the A7. And, and then to the D7, to the B. And it's go to the B. And this is where it gets the fun little riff, which is just going down a minor pentatonic scale, which we've already done. So it's just... So there, what I'm doing is a hammer on thing. So if I come a little bit closer, and if I just go, so I'm gonna start with my third finger there on the high E, and then play it open, and then fret the third string on the B string, and then open, and then second fret of the G, of the G and then open, and then second fret of the uh, D, and then open, second fret of the B, and A, then open, and then, Last but not least, third fret of the G and then open. So all in all, we'll slow that right down. It's just going. And then back to our D. Right. So we've got twice round the chords. So D, D, E. Now it's D to A, D, D, A. And it's back to D. D, D, E, E. And last but not least in the phrase, we've got our B7. Right, so it's just a nice little great song to do with this one, yeah? So... Just to go over that again, it's just got a D sus2. So we're learning some new chords, hopefully, in this as well. And it's got the E7. And then we've got the A7, D7. And then it's just back to the E. And then this is where the last chord in the phrase, you play your B7. Okay, so we've got E to e, D, so D to E, D to E, and then D to A, and then D to E. So it goes D, E, D, E, D, A, and then D, E, and then the last chord in the progression is the B7, like so. So we're going to go through that one more time. So at the ready, so after four, one, Two, three, four, and. And what I like to do is keep a little bit of the rhythm. D, D, E. And now it's the D, A. And it's the D, E. And the B7, the last chord in progression. So after four. And this you add the riff. So this song would sound great if you've got an electric guitar. Turn up the reverb, turn on some uh, bit of an overdrive or something like that and have some fun with it. Yeah, but it also sounds really good on acoustic and you really, it's, it's practicing that bit of chords because you got you're not playing a chord progression all the way through so there's a lot of timing in this one there's a lot of you got to be patient you've got to count in your head and you've got to feel the uh, the pulse of the beat and there's also a nice little riff to think about as well so we're adding loads of different loads of different learning skills in this okay so it's going to go through it one more time and hopefully people will have this so i'm going to go through the chords again so yeah it's d E. And what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to count it with everyone so everyone can sort of feel the, um, the pulse without, uh, without the use of the drum kit, which features quite heavily in this track. So it's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four and A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 
and then D, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then the B7, G, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, brilliant guys, so hopefully you can take that away and have some fun with that. Now, we're just going to get into, as we do with all this, there's so a couple of little things that I wanted to chat about, um, because I feel like doing those two pieces, I didn't want to add too much and overload people with information. So I want to talk a little bit about guitar care, um, for starters. Um, I want to talk a little bit about looking after your instrument and things like that. Now, I've got something here. Um, which I use before and after I play, and this is called Fast Fret. And what this does, if I get it out, this comes with, so I'm not saying you have to go out and buy this because it's not essential. I Sometimes if I don't have this, what I use is just a bit of um, tissue paper. Because if you notice, if you play guitar a lot, you'll notice when you put your hands under the strings, you can feel they get a little bit grubby. Uh, not the nicest thing, which is just a combination of your dead skin cells and sweat. So they're not the nicest thing to talk about, but alas, it has to be talk, spoken about because if your instrument doesn't feel nice to pick up, you're not going to want to play it. And it's all about wanting to pick up your instrument and want to play it. So yeah, what this thing does, if I was to get this, for example, fast for it, which is about a fiver from any music shop, so it's not expensive, I would just get it and I'll just run it along the strings here. So it creates an awful high pitched noise, and I get this um, cloth and we'll just give it a little wipe and just clean it down after you've played it. And also, if you want to put it on before you play it, it makes the strings quite, quite fast and lubricant, so you can run it up and down the neck. Um, I also wanted to talk about strings and gauge of strings. So, when I say gauge of strings, what I mean by that is you can play with it's the thickness of the string basically. So Right here, these are what I play with when I'm playing an electric, and this brand's called Fidario. And when I'm playing, the, these are 11s to 49s, which is quite a, quite a thick gauge. So it goes, you can go right down to 9, so 9 being the highest string, the high E. So they're quite a thin gauge, or you can go up to 12s and even up to 13s, depending on what style of music you want to play. And I recommend playing about with different gauges of strings if you're still relatively new to playing guitar. I recommend having putting on some light strings. If, you, if you're still finding the guitar to be a little bit of a battle, um, to press down on the fretboard. And if you're still coming away with your fingers, with your fingertips hurting, then maybe you've got a, you're playing with a too thick a gauge or also your action so when i say action i mean the distance between the fretboard there to the string so my action is on about six mil which is a nice action for me and it's comfortable for me and some people prefer a higher action because they like to because some people have got a really strong grip and they like to feel like when they're playing the guitar they're really sort of digging in deep and some people like like a nice low action because they've got kind of the delicate players and it's all about preference of of, of you know of, of yourself and if you're finding but if you're finding at the end of the day if you're finding your guitar a little bit difficult to play then these are some things to um just to have a look at really it's all it's all it's all good knowledge to to have um another thing i wanted to talk about is i know i'm doing a little bit of talking in this lesson but just because i feel like these things are really important and i think it's just to have faith in yourself and even if you've relatively new to your journey as uh, being um, a guitarist or an artist or a musician call yourself a guitarist call yourself an artist have the faith in yourself to do that and don't don't be afraid that oh, i've only been playing guitar six months and i only know i only know my open chords i can't play riffs i'm not really good at things like that, that doesn't matter have faith in yourself and and call yourself a musician like it's all about confidence. Confidence is the cornerstone to being a musician. It's having that confidence to go up on stage and play to someone, or having that confidence just to play, just to play some guitar to your mates or your family or anyone like that. Yeah. So this, have faith in yourself and don't be afraid to tell people you're a musician. Be, be proud of it because you want to pick up 
this an instrument and, and become an artist, which um, a lot of people, you know, sometimes, you know, they don't have that confidence just yet. So you've made that, that just that step from that to that is a brilliant big step. Um, so yeah, another thing I wanted to talk about is um, if you don't have a guitar strap, I know it's, these sound like menial little things, but get a guitar strap. Um, you know, you can get guitar straps off Amazon for a pound, probably, I imagine, you know, but I'm sure most of you have got guitar straps. And when you've got your guitar straps, just have a go at playing. Have a go at playing stood up when whatever we're doing in your in, in these lessons and things like that. Have a go at doing doing that stood up and see how you feel because if you want to, if you do have aspirations of being a performer or anything like that, if you if you are practicing from an early age uh, in your guitar career, if you are already practicing stood up, then when it comes to making that transition to going to play on stage, you will find it's not as daunting a prospect and you will feel good about doing it. So, yeah, invest in a strap if you don't have a strap, or if you do have a strap, from time to time, you know, get in your bedroom. If you've got a mirror in your bedroom, play in front of your mirror, have a look at yourself, see how you look. You know, it's not it's not, um, it's not not vanity. It's just, um, it's good practice, all these things, honestly. Um, last but not least, and like I said, I know I've spoken a lot in this session, but I thought it was important just to go over these things and go away with some food for thought. Um, so my last point is, if you're struggling with something, so say for example, last week, I know we were going over the finger picking piece where we're going. If you're struggling with that and you are getting frustrated, don't try and don't try and uh, tackle it too much and don't overbear yourself with it. Um, if you're struggling with it, take a break sleep on it like sleep is the most important thing when it comes to um digesting information and knowledge because that it goes from a different part of your brain and, and it goes to a long part of your brain so yeah i really recommend if you're really struggling with something like that don't to keep chipping away thinking i'm gonna get this i'm gonna get this take a break breaks are as important to your journey of becoming a, um, a guitarist as they are for your practice yeah, so I thought I'd just talk about some of those little things because I know if I'd have been told those things uh, when I was starting out and earlier on in my sort of guitar career, I would have found them really beneficial and they would have really helped me. So yeah, just to clarify, so today, go away, go, um, have a go at that Ain't No Sunshine and, and be confident with reading those tabs and know that because it's quite a simple, it's quite a simple tab, this one, so... Hopefully that'll give you some food for thought. And yeah, drop us a like on here because I've enjoyed today's session. It's been something I've been looking at today with um, a view to like remembering what things helped me along my along my journey. And hopefully these are things that can help you. Uh, and if you have, as I say with all weeks, if you've got any song suggestions that you would like to maybe attempt to cover, um, like put a, put a comment down. Have a you know put a comment in section and we can have a look at it and it might be something we can we can tackle because next week i would like to maybe start looking at some grade two pieces so that you start getting slightly more complex and hopefully we'll go on that journey together with that yeah so yeah thank you very much for today's session guys thanks for everyone who's tuned in i hope you all have a brilliant rest of your week and uh we'll we'll leave it there is there any more comments Got some Is there anything I can help you with just before we go? Some of the first lessons. Um well if you go back to if you go on the YouTube playlist of um of, of this channel, it, everything all the different sessions and all the different tutors. So mine will be under guitar tutors and it'll be labeled week one week two week three week four and just go on it and just like skip into bits that you've missed or is there anything is there anything that you can think of that you've missed and you want to talk about now just before we go
So yeah, just to put before we go, if we're waiting for people to come in, I just want to put into that. So talking about that, um, Bill Withers ain't no sunshine. Um, like that's got an e. It's really nice to put that G major scale into play, so you could be going like G major. Best in needs, yeah. So if you'd like to get a hold of me, um, there is um, loads of ways. If you just find me on Facebook, that's a, probably the best way on Croft Cat website, I assume. Yeah, so if that's everything, so yeah, just before that, I just thought what I was saying, I thought I was off on a tangent. So there, yeah, like that, using that G major scale, sorry, that uh, G major pentatonic scale. So I'm putting that in context with the song, so the Bill Withers. So it's just something you can have a little play with, and that one's really fun. It's good for good for getting into a thing where you can jam with yourself and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, so yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you all have a brilliant rest of your week. Uh, bye for now.